welcome back to the official 9-11 Truth Podcast. Bush Wait. didn't do 9-11, it was Al Gore. Oh. <laughs> Emily reporting with the facts. Yes, if, if, if you play... Uh, Crisis actors! If you play an inconvenient truth in reverse, <laughs> it reveals a POV of him going into the plane. <laughs> Also, 9-11 Emily... wasn't real, Emily says. They were all crisis actors. Yeah. There were there were um, inflatables yeah. on the ground. Yeah, the, the Twin Towers were inflatable bouncy castles. <laughs> yep. Good CGI. Yeah. Also, Emily did Sandy Hook. Single-handedly. She was all of the child actors and the shooter. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time. Yep. It's like one of those like Eddie Murphy movies where they play <laughs> where he plays like the entire cast. Oh, you mean like uh, Norbit? <laughs> yeah, the slutty professor. Yes, that one. <clears throat> so this is episode. I don't know. Fuck it. Twenty maybe. <laughs> we are we are <coughs> we are encroaching the fiftieth episode in total. You know I can't so count. So. We will. Yes, I know, Jeffrey. Your crippling autism <laughs> has prevented you from, from numbers in general. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, Stephen. I'm going to have to ask you to stop your baby babbling, Stephen. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I'm practicing. Yes. No, you're not. Yes. What, are you, what are you practicing? He's, he's for? trying to learn and I'm chase practicing for, for a role date. Playing. Uh, yeah, that's what I've met. <laughs> oh, are you going to be like one of those baby role players? Yeah, like, man. They get off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna trick somebody. Them. I'm gonna trick somebody into. Did you guys hear about that? No, I think I, it was on the radio. Maybe it was on the point one morning. This guy um, tricked people. Like, I guess like put himself in a database as like a disabled person or whatever. Was and, it Dylan? No, <laughs> but anyways, this guy put himself in one of those at, like systems that look for caretakers and stuff. Yeah. And I have heard those. I was gonna say, yeah. he, but he like put himself in there as he had Down syndrome. So he had people like <laughs> come to his house and like because he, he, he yeah he had a fetish yeah he had a fetish for being treated like a baby yeah so hell? he had him like changing diapers and shit and yeah. like so that's why Ethan has to be on the podcast <laughs> <laughs> oh it was well, that, and, like yeah, it they like up. the person like thought it was kind of goofy so she contacted his parents and they were like yeah he he doesn't have Down syndrome he's totally normal and <laughs> was it Adam <laughs> oh oh him and his segue yes. Ab rollers, man. Segway into the dad pussy. <laughs> <coughs> uh, so should we should we do our Kavanaugh rant? <laughs> I, I mean, we can. Yeah, Stephen, have, have you have you been following the story? No, Stephen can't read. I can't see. That is true. So ba- basically, it's like so Trump's pick for the Supreme Court, Brett Kavanaugh. Okay. They've been like interviewing him and everything for months. And uh, just recently, the Democrats have come forward with like a sexual allegation from <clears throat> six years ago. So Brett was like 17 years old, and this chick is accusing him of him and a couple of buddies going like during a party. They were all drinking, taking this chick into a room, getting on top of her, covering her mouth, and trying to take her clothes off. So and the story so, goes. Yes. So the okay. story goes. She has no, she has identified no date, no time, no year even, I don't think, no place. She has no corroboration whatsoever. But, like, the news has been nothing but this for, like, the past week. I mean, like, I've seen the name, but I didn't know, like, the backstory. Yeah. But, so basically no specifics. She's just like, this happened to me. Right. This many years ago. Nearly 40 years ago. And pri- oh prior God. to this, the Democrats during the hearing have been doing nothing but trying to delay at every corner because the midterms are coming up and they're trying to like bank on the fact that they'll have enough votes to deny the Supreme the Court nomination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so paper thin, but like people are still... People are biting stuff. Yeah, I'm like... Fuck so like, I mean, are they... Like they're they're on board with her though on this whole thing. The Democrats, yeah, yeah. Even they're, though they're there's the no, that, like, even though there's no force. legitimate like, and I, you know, what evidence can you really have in something like that? Exactly. Like, and here's another thing. <coughs> they, uh, she like sent a letter to like the Washington Post and like the Democratic leader of this the Supreme Court confirmation hearing or whatever, mm-hmm. and she sat on this for nearly two months. 
before bringing it up in the hearings. If that doesn't stink of like, you're waiting for the most opportune Right, we're making shit it. up. And like, you're obviously not taking this lady seriously if you waited two months. Right. And then also, this lady was asking for anonymity. <coughs> the, the Democratic leader, like, brought her name out without asking her. I mean, her. With, with an allegation like that, you can't still be anonymous. You know what I mean? Correct. But like, no, for it to have any, like, real meat to it, I feel like. I like I you don't have think. To have a name with yeah, a face. You, you can't just be like, oh yeah, I'm this random lady that he tried to bang when we were teenagers. Right. You know, no, that's not. It's not going. Anywhere. I mean, if it happened, yeah, that's terrible. But like, why would you? Why wait thirty something years? We just went through this whole. Why wait other until allegation right thing. now? Right. when he's about to be a Supreme Court justice, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, it does. unless she's trying to. I mean, it does her. from the Democrat perspective, but from hers, like. I guess if she wanted, like, book deals of, like, a Netflix series or something, no, I mean, like, unless she's she'd got come another, out ahead. Unless she's got but, another agenda, she would have brought it up sooner. Yeah. Sounds like a book deal to me. I mean, I'm sure she will have one. But, uh... The Kovnikov story. <laughs> right. I don't know. It's, it's just ridiculous. I agree. Me and Dylan have been ranting about it past <laughs> week. And they're, like... I don't hardly ever comment on people's shit on Facebook, but this one bitch from college, like, posts the most asinine bullshit that I finally had to say something. And let he, me, sent me, he sent me a <clears throat> screenshot of this. It was, like, seven different posts right in a row over, like, he said this. No, so that, that, was the, that was the guy that asked if I had ever read Das Kapital. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into that after. Oh, oh my God. Let me, let me I was dying over that. I was like... What? Okay, <laughs> this this makes sense. This makes sense now. If you just read it, you'll be on board. Right. So this this is what this chick posted. It is like they say this could ruin his life without acknowledging it already ruined hers. They say he was just a kid without acknowledging that she was too. They say it was just a few stupid minutes without acknowledging how those few minutes changed all her years. A couple more after that. Okay. And so my response was, they say, believe her word as gospel truth 38 years after with no corroborating sources, no identified time, date, or location, brought up on the 11th hour of Kavanaugh's confirmation with Democrats sitting on the information for seven weeks before bringing it up at the most inopportune moment in a desperate and obvious attempt to delay the confirmation until after midterms when the votes might swing in their favor. If you don't accept that, Kavanaugh committed a misdemeanor sexual assault at age 17 <coughs> with no evidence to prove such claims, then you're a misogynist. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> Did you ever get a response to that? Her, her, okay, so her response was, <clears throat> hey, lol. I was like, okay, okay. tap it out. But then one, one of her other friends piped in and like, it was insane, dude, what th these people fucking believe. She was, like, saying, <coughs> she brought up the fact that, like, the other guy, Kav Kavanaugh's friend that was, like, also kind of accused of this, he, like, made a book talking about all of his drunk exploits and everything. Okay. And so she was trying to equate, like, she's like, during college, I went to frat parties and... They sexually, uh, I don't know, like cat called me or whatever. And I'm what like, fucking okay, expect? but she's like equating <clears throat> being drunk to being a rapist. And I'm like, that was literally her claim. And I'm like, that's a disservice to every male friend you've ever had that drinks and is it a fucking creep? <laughs> right. Like, okay. Yeah. I'm glad we got. <coughs> So yeah, so that went swimmingly. I I had no words for that because I was just like, I believe your your response was Omega Wolves. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> correct. <laughs> but the next the next thing that he sent me, I don't know, maybe twenty minutes later, was he him debating this Marxist. Yeah, <laughs> literally like, I forget what the origin of the debate even was, but like. This other friend from college, he's, he's always bitching about fucking Jeff Bezos. <laughs> like, the, the Amazon guy, he's like, yeah. the richest guy in the world, and he can't even pay his, his uh, employees properly or whatever. I'm like, 
Okay, if they don't fucking like working for Amazon, that's why we have a fucking free market. You can go, you go anywhere else. else. <laughs> but this guy was, he was saying, you have no choice, like, when you're working for something. It's not a consensual relationship. I'm like, of course it is! You if agree to it, work there! If you're, work, like that's, if you're that's working at Walmart, this. and they say you can't leave, that's slavery. <laughs> That's getting in the same vein as people that, like, want to, like, piss and moan and shit on you for, like, oh, I'm a server, but I can't get another job. And then it's like, I, you know, that makes me so mad. Right. Like, I know Emily probably, like, gets really mad whenever I mention that because she's worked as a server before. And I'm like, okay, yeah. like, I get they make a lot less money, but, like, you don't... Well, they you, make, you they make expect... more with tips in comparison to the minimum wage earners. Right. That's By if they far. Get, that's if they that's if they get tips. Yeah, that's that's all like, depending on if they How get many tip. people in today in today's age sit there and think like like you have to tip somebody. You know what I mean? I yeah. feel like there's enough of those people around. Yeah. I'd say it's the minority that does not tip whatsoever. Right. Or else it's just shit service. <clears throat> right. Stephen doesn't tip. I give just the tip. I don't pay uh, the actual bill. <laughs> but I, I have a couple of dollars give on the table ones. for their troubles. <laughs> No, like I don't mind. Like if there if there wasn't any problems, I don't mind tipping a few bucks or whatever. But like yeah. Emily will go by like the percentage, like exactly. Oh, no. That's that's fucking ridiculous. And I'm like, well, I'm like, okay, like I get, and it's because she was a server. I get it. Yeah. But on, on the same hand, like I don't like it whenever I can tell that somebody like expects it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you're gonna come, like I don't need you to be my best friend, but also don't like get in my face. Don't try and be all cutesy with me. Like no, just fucking you know. Yeah. Do your job. <laughs> people don't... When I go into people's houses with stuff, they don't expect me to, like, be their best friend, you know? I mean, I do. Bring their stuff... Well, you know. Bring their stuff <laughs> in. Suck my dick a little bit. Uh, <laughs> it, it, you, want, you want that tip now, too? <laughs> you want to be a star? Oh, wait, long go. Uh, no, but I don't, I don't get, like, the, the whole tip percentage thing. Because, like, if you go to a really nice restaurant and got, like, lobster or something, which I don't do, but, like, if it came out to, like, $100 or something for your your total... You're expected to give like what, twenty dollars tip or something? Yeah. Twenty bucks. And that's the same amount of work bringing out a platter of lobster as it as it is at Steak and Shake to bring you your burgers on a plate. Right. So like, why <clears throat> fucking give them like a ten times better tip? <laughs> Just because where they and work. See, I, yeah. I think it's kind of interesting too how like with like tattoo work and stuff like that, you know, mm. because people are like, it's a service, you know, they're they're. They're an artist doing you a service. And at first I was like, you know, I, I get leaving a little bit of a tip. But, yeah. like, I also know people who tip, like, a shit ton of money. And it's like, mm. I, I'm already paying... Say you pay, like, two $300 for a tattoo. Like, right. I'm not going to give them another $100, you know? No, I'll no. give them maybe, like, 20 bucks. Yeah. <clears throat> I You know, and I've I, got, I didn't even know I've gotten, tips. Yeah, I've gotten, tattoo like, artists. reamed before by people I know... Because they're just like, are you serious? That's all you give them? Yeah, that's all I give them. Like, I, again, you know how many tattoo artists out there, like, you go and they'll, like, do your shit and they're dumb? Like, they don't want to talk to you at all? Mm-hmm. Granted, there are some that are totally like that, who are personable and whatever, and that's cool, you know? Yeah. Makes for a little bit better experience. But, like, I've also had one done by a guy who fucking looked at me, didn't say a single word to me the whole time. Why the fuck would I tip that guy? Right. Yeah. You know? So, do, <clears throat> how, how does it work with... God forbid, but... How does it work with the wages for tattoo artists? Like, do they get... Well, like, I think... Like, so the commission from I don't, whatever? Or? I don't know, because I'm not one, obviously, yeah. but from what I've heard, that you might know, too. But as far as I know, I think they charge whatever. They get part of it, and the shop owner gets a percentage of their okay. commission, right? That so, that, that's kind of what I think it is. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, going off of that, I kind of understand the pricing and stuff like that. But you can, see, it, it kind of goes into the same thing. You got to understand, like, if they already know that going into it, I feel like anybody who uses their head is going to charge you enough to where they'll get exactly what they feel they should get out of it in the first place. They're the ones setting the prices, so right. why bitch about it? Right. <laughs> you're, 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 it's, uh, <coughs> it's, I've never, it's, I've it's never like had, I've never had one say anything to me. But you know, I've known people that like told me I was like that was ridiculous. Like, God forbid, I don't tip somebody for doing a service. Right. 
but I'm like, but I'm already paying them <laughs> hundreds of dollars. Yeah, you know? they already get a percentage. It's <laughs> like the majority of tattoos. Th- this artists, is what they do. You they know? pay their shop a percentage, whatever <clears throat> their agreed upon percentage. Probably is. booth rent and shit like that. So and... like, this is quoting anywhere between forty and fifty percent. So if it's oh, a three hundred dollar <clears throat> tattoo, they keep half of it. Yeah. I was thinking it would be at least half or something like that. That's that's pretty good. I mean, the the shop <clears throat> probably like provides the ink and the materials and everything. Yeah, I think I'd they do. imagine. Just like any other business, though, you know yeah. what I mean. Do you, are you are, am I supposed to go tip my mechanic whenever I have mechanic work done? Yeah, I gotta fucking do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, Same concept. I feel. There's like. a lot of shit that gives the option of tip. Where I'm like, oh, <coughs> why? why? Like, go to Great Clips and they're like, they have a tip spot. I'm like, I still give them like a dollar or something. You know, what cracks like, me up is come on. So like. It's funny, but like, you know, like restaurants, sit down restaurants that have takeout, yeah. like Applebee's, you know, you can go up there and do takeout or whatever. Yeah, and they they bring you a thing there. for a tip, and I'm like, what? You don't even tell me I've got to my car. Like, no. <laughs> and I, it was funny because Who like. Who gets the, that? The cashier, I guess? I don't even like, know. But the first time we got that. <laughs> they didn't do anything? The first time we got that, I pulled up or whatever, and I had cash on me. Yeah. And they were like, blah, blah, blah. And I handed it to her, and she was just like, okay, thanks, and gave me the receipt and left. And I'm like, what the fuck did you do? You carried it from inside to my car. There was no interaction required there. Right. If anything, give it to me, <coughs> I guess. <laughs> they don't yeah. even get tips. <laughs> right. Go fuck yourself. I just think that's... I just, that's one of the mindsets that makes me crazy, though. It just makes me want to... Oh, I don't even know. What, man. did you have to tip every Yeah, that, like... Yeah. And I just don't... It's, it's To me, it just seems like entitlement. Like, mm. I've worked enough different jobs to know... Yeah, it kind of sucks to have to switch a job, but, like, if you're working in, you know, maybe some people will say, like, oh, like, you know, benefits and insurance. Like, what what food service place is going to have, like, good benefits or, like, good health insurance? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it would be a step up to go work somewhere else that pays a little bit more because mm-hmm. it, it's different everywhere you go, you know? And then people are like, oh, well... What about people that like have kids and stuff like that, and that's the only job they can do? Well, I, you know, no, that's bullshit. I'm sorry, that's, that's, that's bullshit. There's a bunch of shit, <coughs> a bunch of jobs that are blue collar that require no nothing but a GED that are right. like fifteen to twenty I feel dollars like people, an hour. So like, I don't get the argument that people keep making that they're stuck at like fucking Walmart or, or like stuck in McDonald's like a or stuck something. at like a diner. You're not or something looking, like that, you know? <laughs> right? Well, and another thing that I was just thinking about. Um, Shit, if it literally just slipped my mind as you said that. Um, God, what was I going to say? Tips. Something about, Not about tipping. black rage. <laughs> no. Um, Shout out to all oh, my chases. Oh, so, you know, there's. I feel like there's a lot of... When I worked at McDonald's, there were a lot of people like this. Oh, my God. Who would, like... Bernie Sanders? No. no. <laughs> but, like, I know... And I've worked multiple jobs at one time, so I know yeah. how rough it gets. Yeah. But... Nice. It, there's people that'll be like, oh, I have to work three jobs to make ends meet. Bullshit. And then you find out all two or three of those jobs are minimum wage. Yeah. And it's like, you know, maybe instead of working the two lesser paying jobs, take a chance, find a job that pays more, which or, is exactly what I did. Right. Granted, I didn't have to like move companies because it was just moving up a spot at where I currently work at, but mm-hmm. the pay was a 4 or $5 difference. Yeah. So, I mean, it's... That's significant. Right, and not everybody's going to have that option. I know that. I understand that. But, like, I feel like so many people get, like, they're like, oh, I have to work multiple jobs to, like, do blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, not really. Like, Just don't you know, live beyond your means. Well, I That's feel like thing. either that or I feel like sometimes people try and work more than one job to, like, be, like... Look at me. I work more than one job. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Mine just happened to fall where, like... I got the chance to do the other one, and I didn't want to give the one up. Luckily, I didn't, because I probably would have been screwed. But, like, you know, if I can help it, I'll never do that again, because it's terrible. Yeah. I don't see how people can, like, take care of kids and have a life, you know, by doing that. Like, I I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And I get that that's hard, but at that point, I feel like, you know, make it a little bit easier on yourself... And take time and find something that's gonna work, not you know, yeah. just the quickest fix. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> See, it's, it's just insane how many adults are trying to do like fast food and stuff. Right. I just, I just don't get it. 
and then they're like, <coughs> we deserve $15 an hour for this. No, you don't. It's, it's unskilled labor. You don't need any uh, prior education to do it. So that's why you don't get paid more. That's why it's, that's why like, I remember when, also when I worked at McDonald's, there were so many like kids coming right in that would like crap their pants when they found out that they were only going to be making like $8 or like eight twenty five. It's like, what did you And expect? I'm like, like what? When this we like started, the, the basis when, kind of job. Yeah, when we started, I remember I was making seven thirty five. Yep. Yeah. And I was like, people like don't understand that. Like some of like the young young ones, mm-hmm. they'd be like, "Oh my god!" And they're like bitching about because they're making eight fifty and not nine dollars an hour. And it's like, are you kidding me? Like, I I did this job for like almost three years making like a whole dollar or more or less than what you're making now. And you what just started inflation, Steven? <laughs> <laughs> them kids don't have any bills. <laughs> Most of them don't. <laughs> but Justin has to go to Paul McCartney for $300 for the fifth time. Fuck oh off. <laughs> Bernie 2020. <laughs> Where are my free health care? <laughs> but this, this just comes back to what you said. Don't live beyond your fucking means. Yep. Right. That don't is what a, it is. Don't get a new fucking iPhone every year. Don't get the newest model. Right. Don't get the newest car. Like... Move in with friends or get a girlfriend or something. Like, don't live by yourself. <laughs> get a girlfriend or something. Like, I mean, come I don't on. Know, that might be expensive. Justin lives with like <laughs> five people. That's, I mean, that's what it you works out do. for him. Yeah. <laughs> that's how he affords those Paul McCartney tickets. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> Priorities. Priorities. <laughs> yeah. Priorities. And he gets a new iPhone like every year or every other year. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe he's got the iPhone Forever plan. <laughs> 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 The government owes me an iPhone every year. No, the, it does not. The government does not exist to take care of you. I know. They, they do not. I don't know where people get off on that. But Jimmy Kimmel and Jim Carrey told me Jim that. Carrey. <laughs> no. God. When Jim Carrey came out and said, we just need to accept socialism, I was yeah. like, fuck off. No. no. He's a fucking idiot, dude. I guess he's like, <laughs> as well. Like... There's there's literally literally a video of Bernie like 10, 20 years ago or something, back when Chavez was in power. He was like praising him, telling him what what good job he's doing in Venezuela, and like people don't even acknowledge that. Like this fucker, he's praising Venezuela. He had his honeymoon in the Soviet Union. Like this guy does not know what he's doing. No. Okay, and here's another thing, since we're just kind of ripping on Bernie. Yeah. <laughs> what, and where, where in the hell do you get off saying you're a socialist if you have three homes? Also what, true, yeah. Why do you need three? Explain <clears throat> what you have done that entitles you to three houses. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I forget who it was, but they, it's like Crowder or Ben, ben Shapiro or someone, but they were like talking about fuckers. how they, they were on a plane and they saw Bernie there and he was like... On purpose, doing like the closest thing to coach, like not coach, but like the economy, whatever, yeah. <laughs> to like make it seem like he was, you know, on on the level one of, of the people poverty or so. Yeah, one of the <laughs> God, it's fucking dumb. People are dumb. I was, I was, I've been researching healthcare a lot lately, and uh. I saw a video that was talking about Medicare and Medicaid, and it had a chart that is like <coughs> the the price index for healthcare was like right here, in like the sixties. Then Medicare and Medicaid, it was like, <gasps> and they're like, you guys want more of that? You guys want to expand that? Look at this one chart, and you'll see like it's pretty undeniably bad. <coughs> I mean, these these programs were not designed to be long-term health options. Back when they were implemented, back in the 50s or 60s, mm. most people didn't even live to get the benefits. Like, so you have to be 65 to get these things, right? Mm. The median right. age... What, back, one of them. What is it? Medi- Medicare or Medicaid? That's I thought like it was... For 65 so, plus, and then the other one's like... So Medicaid, <clears throat> I believe, is the federal. That's the 65 and up. And then yeah. Medicare is the state whatever and that varies by state mm. um so yeah so to get your medicaid 65 uh, <coughs> and then you get all these benefits or whatever but in it in order to even like be accepted for that you have to like own practically nothing 
if you have any, I think it's more than like two thousand dollars in your bank account, you don't get those benefits. Really? Yes. Jeez. Damn. Yeah. So like, you cannot have anything to have that, and so <laughs> people will liquidate and sell all their shit. Um, but you have to be careful because like they'll check your family's accounts, and if things like disappear from yours, but then your, your grandchild over here suddenly got seventy grand, uh, yeah. it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so there are, there are caveats to that. But like I was saying, back when these things were implemented, most people didn't even live to get to them. And now we've got people that are living to 80, 90, 100 years yeah. on this... Cashing s- out. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know the Not average age literally, but <laughs> the 60s. I, I can't imagine that it'd be that much lower <clears throat> uh, by like several decades. Yes. And most pe- So if most people back then lived to... at like an average age of like 63 some maybe into the 70s some into the 80s and granted we have those outliers that are like in their hundreds hundreds tens yeah you know whatever handful they are okay fine but the median age nowadays is like 80 something years of age so we're talking about 15 years of each of these people drawing off this program when back when it was implemented we were talking about maybe five yeah so we have tripled the amount of time that everybody is using these things and then we're just multiplying it exponentially because of the baby boomers. And there's your problem. True, true. You gotta think, even back then, I know it's not that terribly long ago, but like, I'm sure like working conditions had a, a big impact on that too. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, somewhat. Because like, <clears throat> and I'm not meaning like, you know, like, way back when, like, they had, like, kids in factories and shit, and, like, people were yeah. dying. Like, <laughs> like, like, the 1870s? Like, it's not like that. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> as I say, like, into, like, the early 19s. Like, no, it's not like that. <laughs> but, like, I mean, you know, like, it's still... I don't know. Like, now everything's, oh, safety this, safety that, blah, blah, blah. Like, it wasn't like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So I know it seems kind of whack, but I feel like they kind of banked on that, too, you know? What, people just dying? dying. Well, not place. people dying, but, like, yeah. I mean, you know, that's maybe the, like, the, I guess if you're looking at it from, like, a purely number standpoint, you have to take that into consideration, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Ugh. Stop it! Do you want to, uh, <laughs> talk about that Crowder video? <laughs> the Crowder <laughs> <and the funds. laughs> I couldn't watch all of it. I was dying. Right. Oh my god. I was dying. It was really good. Oh my goodness. Steven's about to get shot out there. Yo, I got you back if they come at you. Are you going to get the Glock in your Rari? Yes. <laughs> <sighs> I'm always ready to go. I'm always angry. <laughs> ah. What was that? It was my neighbor that lives right over there, probably getting pissy because. There's people parked on both sides of the street. So you're there's, just gonna you're just gonna honk at the sky. Well, he, he backed up and he went around. Why? So he went around. <laughs> okay. Uh, <coughs> Steven, have you ever watched any of Crowder's stuff? <laughs> it's it's pretty fucking hilarious, the change my mind stuff and everything. But he started doing this segment, it's called Crowder Confronts. And oh basically gosh. like these people keep making wild accusations at him, like saying that he's trying to incite violence, or like this guy that he just confronted said that he made threats to kill his children and like showed up at his house with a bunch of his people to like threaten him and stuff. Okay. And so he showed up at this guy. This guy's like a, a professor, some liberal professor, and he shows up in like a fucking morph suit <laughs> with, with, with like signs of this guy's tweets just saying blatant lies, and he confronts them. And the guy, the guy stuck to it. He kept saying that he was threatening his family and shit. And oh his, my god! His dude. students were like believing it, like. Shouting at Crowder and shit like they're wow. fucking brainwashed, dude. This is ridiculous, though. How easy it is for people to get brainwashed like that, right? Like people he, who people who have literally no real knowledge of what's happening, right? You know, like Stephen. <laughs> what's happening in the next room? <coughs> no one knows. <laughs> Ooh, something socialist. <laughs> no, just like like the people you were talking about earlier that were posting about that other stuff. Like what you know? How how do they know any more than? Like what we, you know, they weren't there. They well, don't know the ins and outs. I, I, so, I will say that <coughs> one of the guys I debated with has read Dos Capital, and it, according to him, it did change his life. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the better, clearly. <laughs> nope. If it's 
such a great paradise. You go live there. <laughs> you let me know how that turns out. I'll see you in a week. Seriously, like, did I, did I send you old messages for that guy? Uh, you sent me, like, the last one where he was like, have you even read this? Oh. Uh, well, the, the stuff detailing that before, he was like, like, how he was painting it was like, mm-hmm. that capitalism is literally slavery, and like, it's some kind of dystopian version of the U.S. I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> We're at like, a 3.9 unemployment rate. Our fucking GDP is bigger than all of the European Union and like all this shit. I'm like, we're doing pretty good. It's not a dystopia. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's what he said. Have you read Das Capital? <laughs> no, I have not. <clears throat> because I have better things to do with my time. Yes. <laughs> like animate big titties. <laughs> that is a passion of mine. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Because that's the capitalist dream. White okay. picket fence and big anime titties. <laughs> big old wall to keep out the Mexicans. <laughs> Stephen, why are you here? You're a Mexican. Wow. Yeah, why okay. have you been deported yet? Because <laughs> I'm good at hiding. We know that you killed that girl, Molly Tibbetts. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god. White power. We, we never talked about that. So the, the guy that killed Molly Tibbetts, like, so it was like non-stop media co- coverage of this chick when she was missing. She was missing mm-hmm. for like, what, two weeks or right. something. And as soon as it came out that she was killed by An this illegal. illegal immigrant, they just stopped. It was like media silence on it. And so there was like, all these people were saying, it doesn't matter who it was, it doesn't matter. And then I saw this video, and it was like, all these times that, like, Obama was like, if our gun control policies can can save one life, it will make a difference. Well, this could have been fucking prevented if he was properly vaccinated. We, you know, had some kind of southern security. Right. Or northern damn Canadians. <laughs> Yes, he swam around to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, <coughs> so, the did I send you that video link the other day of that fan-made warthog? I've seen it. I don't think you sent it to me. Okay, though. so he it's done. Yeah. It's a fi- it's like officially finished. Mm. Uh, it took him like seven years to build this thing. And did the government pay for it? Yes. They did. Um, <laughs> They're actually taking it from him now and using it for war. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah. He, so he They're just going to use his plans and uh, mass produce them. Yes, he New used, military he used his wick checks to pay for it. No, there's like, you know, there's like video of him actually like driving up and down like the highway and this stuff. And he, Running over grunts? Yeah, some of the awesome. early, um, like the test footage where it was like just a stripped down shell where him and his buddies had like like a tarp draped over it, they were out mudding, because he lives in, like, Michigan. Um, and he was like, yeah, this cost me, like, seven years of my life, and it took me about $11,000, give or take, to, like, finally build this thing together. And they were like, oh, if you ever sold it, what do you think you could sell it for? He's like, oh, if it was a diehard Halo fan, probably, like, $100,000. And I'm just like, years. hold on. <coughs> hold on. I get that this is cool, but this is not a hundred thousand dollars. No, <laughs> this is a nineteen eighty four stripped down like, like little old buggy that you yeah. have three D printed a lot of shit onto. This is not a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> worth of material. I don't know, man. It depends on how long it took him. Like, I, I find it hard to believe that he was working on it very hard if it took him seven years. I, I, I feel like know. it was like the weekend project. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, still gotta go build the hog. Uh, gotta work. Yeah. Gotta work to do. I bet someone will pay for that though. <clears throat> Oh yeah. I mean, if it can, if and when <coughs> I finally do get a job, I'll, I would maybe commission one of those. That'd be cool as shit. Lucas, yeah. are you kidding me? Yeah, Lucas will pot it, uh, cash in his pot stocks. <laughs> Speaking of Lucas, he'll take out his rough IRA and buy it, dude. <laughs> he, he quit Main and Mill. Oh god. Because he got a job up at this place called Fresh Time. Are it's you like, kidding me? Yes. What is that? It's like a freaking hipster ass produce fucking place. <laughs> like like in the same vein as like Whole Foods and stuff. Are you kidding me? Yes. Where at? And Where like, is there even one around here? They're like forty minutes. He built one. <laughs> it's like Kirkwood or whatever. <laughs> and he's still living with your mom and dad. Yeah. What the hell, dude? You know what his reasoning was? Benefits. 
what benefits? <laughs> Apparently, they like pay for insurance <coughs> and all this. This has to be a minimum wage job. I don't know what it is. But no, I doubt, there's no way like, it's a better pay. I'm literally pay talking maybe maybe like nine ten dollars tops. Unless it's like some crazy anomaly where they and pay he's driving to Kirkwood, so that's eating into its profit. The closest one I've seen is in Baldwin, so... I don't know exactly where it's at. I've never been to it. But when he told me this, I was like, so let me get this straight. You have about a year left of college, and you're getting ready to like do some internship <clears> stuff. <throat> you just quit a job that... That made, would probably work with whatever you needed them to do. Like, it's... Seven minutes away from where you live. Sure, you don't get benefits, but you're not paying for gas 40 like minutes both ways. Right. And you're not going to accrue enough time for any IRA or anything to be kind of any kind of like amountable anything. Be- because just, you know, this is the thing. So Best I, time farmer's market. I was just like, okay. This makes about no damn sense whatsoever. But, okay. And anything that Lucas does... Does? Most of it does not. <laughs> how's his how's his garden coming along? Most of it has died. <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> Here, let, let me interject real quick, even though that was hilarious. Average fresh time farmers market hourly pay ranges from approximately nine oh three per hour for cashier. Yeah, up to that. up to twenty five dollars per hour for management positions. So he's getting nine dollars. <laughs> <laughs> nine or three. That's what I said. Probably like ten bucks tops, man. He doesn't have retail experience either, not to my knowledge. So no. like, they're not gonna they're gonna pay him the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, he's gonna be you know <clears throat> that dude stacking apples. He's gonna be doing work he could do at Walmart, dude. But he's gotta drive but forty minutes time. now every do- oh my every gosh, way, man. And his reasoning was like, oh, it's closer to like school and stuff. And I'm like, you go to school three times a week, <clears throat> right? Are you gonna? Li- is he gonna move up there? I don't think so. Because if he moved up there, that would make more sense. He's I don't... moving in with Caitlin. <laughs> oh God! I, no, I, I, not that I'm aware of. He hasn't said, and I haven't seen boxes started to get moved. So, no. Dude, I think. Interesting. No, the other day he mentioned he was like, I'm probably gonna spend a lot more time up there because my friends are up there. I'm just like, so what friends? <laughs> so is like, he just gonna bunk with his buddies? I guess, but at some point they're probably gonna charge him rent. <laughs> Okay, like, look at it this way, though. Say, like, like I know this would probably be the case with any of us. Say, like, if one of us lived up that way or something like that, and we stayed maybe, like, once in a great while, it's not a big deal. But, like, if you were, like, bunking at my house for, like, months at a time, you know. You're, you're going to help out. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to stay in my place, eat my food. <laughs> you're going to help, help buy out. groceries, at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he he hit us with that about. And I know that ex- that from experience, there's not much assistance there. <laughs> he uh, or if, if there is, it's all gone in days. <laughs> yeah, so, I thought that was my almond milk that I bought. So he hit us with that like a week ago, and my dad was just like, <clears throat> "The boy ain't right." <laughs> what? <laughs> Dang it, Bobby! <laughs> yeah, I I, just, I don't know, man. Like I know I've done some stupid shit, but. You've never done anything with Lucas level. Well, like, okay, like... with that girl after him. Okay. So. <laughs> 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 